All right, let's talk. Let's talk about the NBA. Yesterday, uh, Milwaukee scaved off and prevented getting swept. We'll get to that, and also we're going to talk about the Lakers and the Houston Rockets game as well. Lakers even it up as most people in America thought they would. So let's get to it. Check out our NBA talk playlist. Don't forget to share the videos. Best way to help us out: hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Basically, Giannis went down with an ankle injury. Uh, I hope he left the arena in a boot. So hopefully, hopefully it ain't a situation where. You know, it's like uh, Kevin Durant where he's going to miss a significant amount of time or possibly next season. So, um, But what's going on with Milwaukee is this, right? I'm explaining it to you. Uh, some people don't understand basketball. Some people do. Giannis is just another LeBron right now. And I'm not talking about, you know, from a complete skill set, um, from a limited skill set. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, he just likes to have the ball in his hands, and that takes away what Middleton can do. And that takes away from what Eric Bledsoe can do. It takes away from their aggressiveness. If you ever seen a game with Middleton and um, you know Bledsoe playing and, and Giannis not starting, they're aggressive. They're handling the ball. The ball is moving. Giannis stops the ball movement. He's not good as LeBron was in his heyday or even right now, you know, full circle offensive wise, where he can dominate the ball and they can they can continue to advance because LeBron got the mid range jumper. LeBron can shoot the three. He can do a number of things in there where, you know, makes him great. And why, right now, Giannis is limited, and he 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 dominates the ball. So once he dominates the ball, he pushed the ball up the floor so many times, like LeBron, excuse me, um, for a few possessions. Now, Bledsoe don't have a rhythm. Bledsoe is a guy that need to get in the rhythm, had a ball. Chris Middleton can no longer be aggressive. Now they, now they push to be spot-up shooters. You know what I'm saying? And, and Bledsoe is not a spot-up shooter by trade. And Chris Middleton can spot up and shoot, but you see when Chris Middleton can put the ball on the ground, he's just that more effective. So LeBron, I mean, excuse me, Giannis has to learn to play off the ball. And that's the issue. Giannis cannot play off the ball because he can't spot up and shoot, but they also can have him slash and have him, you know, do the backdoor cuts. But he has to learn how to play through the post. He has to learn how to, you know, get an offensive jump shot. But the best, best ability he can learn is how to play off the ball. You know what I'm saying? Slash, cut, backdoor. He just needs the ball in the hand. And distribute it, distribute so the defense can focus on him. When they focus on him and he kick it out to Blesso. By this time, it's 10, 8 seconds on the shot clock if they're lucky. And, you know, then Blesso got to become a spot up shooter. Blesso's a dude, you know, that need to get in the rhythm, you know, handle the rock, dribble, get to the rim. You know what I'm saying? That's how he need to get in his swag. That's how he feel out of his swag. Same thing for Middleton. So in Milwaukee, they got to find a situation where how they can get a ball movement on offense, get the most out of Giannis, get the most out of Middleton and Bledsoe. That's their problem. They got the team to beat Milwaukee because defensively they can lock in. They just they just so focus on Giannis. Giannis just pounding the ball in the court, pounding it in the court. He drive it, get a charge, or he drive it, and then he kick it out to Middleton. And now Middleton got to shoot a spot up three pointer, but Middleton ain't really never you know got into no rhythm. You know people say, "Oh, Middleton, sorry." Milton showed you yesterday if he can handle the ball a little bit and get into a rhythm, he can be aggressive. So I put that on Mike Budenholzer. I do. Mike Budenholzer needs to put a better offense together to get the most out of what he got. Right now, it's just them watching Giannis pound the ball into the ground. And that's what's going on in the NBA. Everybody has really took that isolation basketball, fuck calling plays. They out there playing rec ball. And when Giannis learns to distribute the ball, when he learns to play off the ball, it's going to be a lot better for him in his career. He can't just pound the ball. And the reason he pound the ball because that's all he can do. And that's all that the offense allows him to do is to pound the ball. You know, he can he can he can drive it. You know, they can they can take the ball out of his hands and he can cut back door. He can slash to the rim. They can let uh, Middleton and Bledsoe set him up. He can call some plays. But Budenholzer is the issue here. Just like 88 percent of the NBA coaches out here who don't know how to install an offense. Budenhauser is the issue. He don't know how to, you know, do the team. But, you know, Miami thought when Giannis went out, they probably got lax, so we got this. And Middleton stepped up. And people, un- un- they, they, he don't, he get a lot of criticism that he don't deserve. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the offense. They don't never run no plays with Middleton. With Middleton coming off a screen, he can catch a shoot. Or he come off a, off a pin, off a curl or a pin down and get to the bucket. It's Giannis creating everything for that offense. It's Giannis getting it off the off the rebound, taking it all the way to the court, driving to the hole. You know, Giannis in the regular set, you know, blowing by somebody, driving into the hole. 
you know, they don't run no Princeton style offense. They don't run no backdoor cuts. They don't let Middleton, you know, distribute the ball, Bledsoe distribute the ball. You know what I'm saying? And they run an offense and Giannis cutting cutting through the defense and slashing and getting easy get easy buckets. And then the art of coaching is dying in basketball. It is. You know what I'm saying? Middleton Middleton legitimately, you know, can, you know, can do some other things and be a spot up shooter, but you know, people expect my Milwaukee to close. I mean, Miami to close them out in Game Five. Uh, we'll see. But you know, right now, Budenholzer are just not getting the best out, the most out of Giannis right now, or he's not getting the most out of Bledsoe or Middleton because he won't allow to run no motion in the offense. You know, you would think after two losing one or two games, where everybody could focus on Giannis, that they'd make some adjustments. But he ha- he he don't have the ability to make those offensive adjustments, and that's just the real shit. You know what I'm saying? So. If Giannis played game five, you know what I'm saying, we'll see. But he left in the boot, so could be his last game in Milwaukee. And if it's his last game in Milwaukee, you know, he go to Golden State, he's going to have some issues there too because Draymond like to handle the rock. You know what I'm saying? You know, is Draymond going to give up his position? The difference was with bringing KD here, KD don't need the ball to be effective. KD can spot up and shoot. KD can get it off the dribble. KD can slash to the rim. The ball, the ball moving in motion. You take the ball out of Giannis' hands, he can't pound the ball up. What, what can he do? You can get him to slash if you got the, the right system. You can get him to backdoor cut, get some, get some easy buckets. But Kevin Durant was so dominant in Golden State because Kevin Durant can play without the ball. He's a complete offensive player. Guys like Giannis and LeBron, they're not complete. And people don't want to hear it. They're not complete offensive players. Without the ball, they don't function. They can't function. That's why LeBron got David Black fired. You know what I'm saying? That's why he got Luke Walton fired. He want to have the ball. He want to dominate the ball. So does Giannis. But Giannis is not as good as LeBron. He can't shoot. He can't shoot the mid-range. You know what I'm saying? He, ha- he has to figure out a way to, to add to his game. But even then, he ain't the guy you want dominating the ball every time. You know what I'm saying? You need to let your teammates get involved. And that's the difference. That's why Kevin Durant can go to a super team and KG, Paul Pierce, and Rondo can create a super team because in Ray Allen, they all can play without the ball. They can do other things. They can defend. They can post up. They can cut. They can, you know, they, you know Doc Rivers had a nice offensive game plan. Even you watch Doc Rivers now with, versus Boston, his coach in, my, in Orlando, his coaching style has changed a lot. He doing that with everybody else doing. Isolation basketball, Kawhi at the top of the key. Paul George, top of the key, dribble, dribble, drive, kick. Like, you know what I'm saying? The art of coaching is dying. And and, and Les Milwaukee and Budenholzer can make the adjustments where, you know, if Giannis do come back and they can move him without the ball, it'd be that, that much more dangerous. But, you know, you know, Budenholzer sucks offensively. I mean, every coach I watch, except for like Steve Kerr, Greg Pop, Popovich, you know what I'm saying? It might be a few other ones out there. They all suck. Everybody just watch somebody pound the ball. And the only thing they haven't lost the art of is out of bound plays. They still do a good job of that. But moving on to Houston and LA, we all know LA was gonna win this game. The NBA was not gonna not let LA teams make it to the Western Conference Finals unless it's an injury or something or a suspension. I don't see that happening. I think LA and LA gonna be there to collect Clippers and the Lakers. There's no way about it. But um yesterday they cheated for the Lakers like a motherfucker. Man, it was one call where Anthony Davis fouled, I think, Covington, and they called the foul on Covington. They don't even try to hide it no more. One play that Robert Covington got all ball on LeBron in the fourth quarter, they called the foul, and it was all ball. So, I mean, at the end of the day, the NBA is like no other team, no other uh, team sports in America. The refs can control who win and who lose the game. And the refs throughout the bubble, uh, outside of a few games, especially Game 7 versus Utah and, uh, and Denver, the refs have been a star of the bubble. I mean, how many fucking free throws do we have to sit through and watch? You know what I'm saying? Like, Anthony Davis has P.J. Tucker, right? He has him on the baseline, about three feet off the block. This joker turns and, and shoots an off-balance fadeaway. Like, he's just such a pussy, man, on the court. You know what I'm saying? He's still letting P.J. Tucker get up under him. This dude is six foot ten. P.J. Tucker six foot five. So you telling me Anthony Davis, he can't post this dude up, spin, spin, uh, spin paint wide, paint side, and finish up at the bucket. Get out of here. He can spin paint side, stop, pop on the block, get an easy mid range. You know what I'm saying? This dude don't know how to play no big man, bro. This dude overrated. People say, oh, he's the most skilled big man. He don't know how to post up. So how can you be better than Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal, and you can't master the fundamentals and basics of being a big guy? 
it's my question. He's still out shooting out shooting threes and shit, man. But um, you know, Rondo made a big shot down the stretch yesterday. You know, Houston got behind early, and I think that was a huge issue for them. Um, but you know, um, Westbrook was the star of the show. Westbrook was the MVP, the most valuable player for the Lakers and the Houston Rockets yesterday, man. He he took value away from Houston. He played like shit yesterday. He airballed three pointers, missed jump shots. You know what I'm saying? So you know, at the end of the day, you know, Westbrook had a bad game. Maybe the quad ain't 100 percent healed. But I just thought this was a terrible fit for for them. Even though he brings some things rebounding, you know, facilitating wise, this wasn't a good fit. This is just as bad as Carmelo Anthony. It just let you know. Um, Mike, uh, Mike D'Antoni, whatever his name is, he had a pro he had a personal problem with Carmelo Anthony. That's what it was. It was personal going back to New York because Westbrook is just as bad as Carmelo is in the system because he can't fucking shoot. Melo is a better shooter. And, you know, at the end of the day, they should have went out there and got somebody else. To be honest, I don't know who else they could have got, you know, via trade. But, you know, but I think they, they could make it work, but they're going to fold. You got two dudes that historically fold in big moments. Um, you know, and I just the Lakers going to win. There's just no point of sitting there just telling you, selling you dreams that Houston can win. When it going gets tough, Harden disappears. I don't care what y'all say. He made a defensive play on Dort, undrafted rookie, right? Won a cookie. Other than that whole game seven with Oklahoma City Thunder, he didn't show up. When it, the pressure is on the line, James Harden fold. He don't make no diamond at all. So I'm not even concerned about the Lakers in this series, man. The Lakers should win. The Clippers should win. And um, like I said before, ain't nothing going to change in Houston, man. Nothing going to change. Um, you know, the Lakers should win the game. Danny Green made a big three down the stretch yesterday. LeBron did his thing. You know, you know, I just see them winning the game. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they won the next three straight. I just don't see no other way than them doing the L.A. team. So they did that for that moment exactly. The Western Conference Finals is the NBA Finals for TV ratings for the NBA. But, hey, let me know what you think. Uh, I still think Miami going to advance, and I still think the Lakers going to advance. Just don't think Houston built for it. But, hey, let, and they, they lost the lead going into that fourth quarter, I believe. They was up by two. You know, and then, you know when it's winning time, you know, it's historically Westbrook and you know, James Harden ain't show up, but hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out if you got business questions, quality, response, share video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel, cash out, PayPal, description. Best way to donate, share the video. Check out the NBA Talk playlist for more videos like this. One time for the one time we go.